Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. I'm looking at this book from the Legal Action Group. 50 years, 1972 to 2022, it's the Access to Justice charity. This book is called Discrimination in Public Law. It's been written by Adam Bestraw with the help from Oliver Percy. Uh, Lag have produced a really excellent book here again. It's, uh, it's not a long book, it's 260 pages. It's got uh, an index at the back, a paragraph numbered. Um, you can see the there's a little bit of uh, appendices at the back there, not much, the legislation. You can see the structure, paragraph numbering, and the uh, footnotes at the bottom. And if we go to the front of the book, Discrimination in Public Law, there we go. Front, there's some information about the authors there, both barristers, and then you've got a preface uh, dated January 2022. So I'm recording this a little later in the year, um, but it's a, I think it's an important book. The law is as stated as at the 16th of January 2022. You've then got a content section, very much the house style of the Legal Action Group. Um, you've got various, you can see the actual um, structure of the book. There are 17 chapters in total, split into various parts. Then you've got um, some cases. And after that, you've got the usual suspects going to turn up in a minute uh, when I get through that. Statutes. And after that, you've got some statutory instruments. And after that, some international and European. And after that, we get into the book itself. Part A, you've got a little mini index right at the beginning. It starts with the Equality Act 2010 and it looks very much at uh, where we're going. And it starts off, that's the first chapter, introduction, then you go over and you can see how it's structured, paragraph numbering and so forth. And then it goes into the various chapters and runs all the way through. There's a lot of footnoting, which is quite helpful. But what do we say about it? Well, Elizabeth was the lead writer on this book and she describes it as indispensable an important new book on discrimination relevant to judicial review, which has been in and out of the news, political news anyway, and uh, in, in the past. Um, obviously, there have been a number of uh, different political viewpoints as to the extent of judicial review availability and how far it should be allowed to develop. There are some people who think it's far too easy to judicially review any decisions. And other people feel, well, it's a very important um, democratic mechanism and so there is, which must be protected. Now, I do see the arguments on both sides. I'm not going to make any comments about whether it's gone too far or whether it should be limited. But there certainly have been very um, clear indications that some people believe it's, uh, the, the role of judicial review has grown a bit too much. However, that's a matter for other people. This book, I think, because it's looking at discrimination in public law, is, I think, a valuable book looking at, at the issues of discrimination in the 2020s because we do have a problem. It's not going away. It's, not, it's always been there in many senses. The question now is how we look at it in terms of our processes in the future. And, of course, this is what we say about the book. It could well be, either now or in the future, that you as a practitioner will need to rely on discrimination arguments if you are providing advice or representation, for example, in a judicial review claim. And I have to say I get that within the direct access practice I have. I get quite a lot of people who are claiming some form of discrimination. Now, in that event, you will be pleased, uh, not to mention relieved, that at last there is a new book out by Adam Straw Queen's Council that covers comprehensively and succinctly all salient aspects of this often complex, controversial, uh, disputatious and certainly wide-ranging area of law. Discrimination, of course, can occur just about anywhere. And it's important to note that it's published by the Legal Action Group in a handy paperback format which makes it a convenient as well as an authoritative work of reference. And of course, the Legal Action Group, which will be well known to many of you, is celebrating its uh, 50th anniversary in 2022. Now, as the Legal Action Group explains, this book, Discrimination in Public Law, 
covers the four sources of law regarding equal treatment as relevant to judicial review. And practitioners dealing with discrimination will need to know all four of these areas, and they are as follows. The Equality Act 2010, Article 14 of the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR, um, EU law which has been retained post-Brexit, and public law equal treatment. And I, I think these are very important areas for us to look at because this is where there's a bit of an overlap in what I call administrative law between um, what is legal and what becomes a political issue because it has become political as far as some members of parliament are concerned. Because discrimination issues can manifest themselves almost any, everywhere uh, within an extraordinarily wide range of categories and that would be from asylum and benefits issues to community care, housing, education, immigration, health, mental health, prison law, police and trafficking. And as I'm sure the readers will note, uh, it's a short list in fact in reality, but it does cover very key uh, controversial topics and remarkably however the relevant areas of law pertaining to discrimination are brought together in this volume uh, which I find quite helpful because it's all together in the one place and of course European Union law uh, concerning discrimination is for example discussed in the book's final section which is part D and I think again that's quite useful this is not meant to be a Ramona type book at all just in case people are thinking it is because the the Brexit Remain argument is still around. I certainly found that in the recent elections we've just faced in May of 2022. But um, certainly I, I believe this is of great help because as the Legal Action Group attests, this remarkably succinct and informative text, quote, aims to draw on useful authorities from outside their specialism. And it's also important to note that more than 60 pages of tables are included here. That covers cases, statutes and statutory instruments, which you saw at the front of the book, plus the table of European and international legislation. And please note that the appendix contains links to pub publicly available resources referred to in the text. And of course, that's, I think, really quite important today because there's a wealth of information available for people to um, seek if they need the information. So let me conclude by saying this, that here then is a distinguished work of reference that is also practical and convenient to use. And considering the gravity and the importance of the subject matter, it's something we think should be included in every practitioner's law library and the date of publication is cited in, in the early part of 2022. Let me just show you the book again. There it is. There's, it's a paperback, then there's the spine and then there's the back. I'd say it runs to, um, well, it's under 300, 250 pages, just opening it in the middle. Prohibited conduct. Here we go, looking at various things that mustn't be done. You see the paragraph numbering at the sides there. Uh, there's a bit of footnoting there and then paragraph numbering there. It's easy to navigate depending on what you're looking for. This is what is um, direct discrimination, unconscious discrimination and so forth because it's looking about the sort of conduct that is prohibited. Just giving you one example. But it's an excellent book and I'd like to thank LAG very much indeed for producing it. Um, they have done a great deal over the years to help people like myself as junior barristers. Um, they do help the unrepresented um, parties, of course, with the wonderful range of books they have. Uh, but they do make our lives a lot easier. And you will see these books, of course, in the courts. They're available in reference libraries and at Citizens Advice and so forth. Uh, but they give, give us a very good service. And I'd like to thank all of them. And, of course, um, Adam Straw and, um, and his colleague uh, Oliver uh, Percy very much indeed for producing this excellent work. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.